This is a stylish and functional bag with some serious design chops. It's the Question Day Pack, and I have three main points on this thing. The first is that it's doable and it looks suitable in a suit. The second is you can also dress down with it. I like those two things, aesthetically, stylistically. Some of you need a little help. You know what I'm talking about. You know who you are, and this does both the suit and the dress down. But then this third point, it works like we need a modern bag to work, which is sort of specifically I'm talking about there's organization enough and there's capacity enough. What is up everybody? My name is Chase Wardman Reeves and in case you are new here, I do in-depth reviews of products that I think are worthwhile for modern life. Okay, because if you've ever bought something and then realize you've been duped by a marketer into buying some bullshit, it's a terrible feeling. I'm a professional marketer and entrepreneur. I've started up my own businesses. They got successful. I work with a lot of other businesses. You can check out chasereeves.net and there's like a place where you can like book just to talk with me. Like, let's talk through your business issue. But as a marketer, I've been getting into selling things to people and I realized how easy it is to like make a sales page and dupe someone into shit. It's a terrible feeling. And I'm, I'm like kind of operating in the world to fight against that. Like, I'm like, that's that stops now. That stops here. So we're always interested in finding products that matter. And this one to me is, is a very matterful kind of product. Some quick details on it, $220 USD right now at the time of filming this, uh, made by a company out in Zurich. Who, uh, who have some fucking killer design chops. So 220 bucks, 15 liters, okay? Basically, I call it like 15 liters pure. That feels a little shit, a little, little slight. It feels larger than 15 liter in terms of what you can actually fit in here because the capacity itself, there's no bells and whistles and dividers and stuff like that inside really. So you actually have a good amount of capacity inside the bag, even though it only says 15 liters. Let's talk about one of life's modern challenges a backpack that works with a suit. Do you know what I'm talking about? Now, some of you just can fast forward a little bit, but others of you are like, dude, tell me about it. I have a real job, Chase. I have to go to be meetings. Like you have to walk in with a briefcase or something. I'm like, there's old people I work with. They expect certain things. They're kind of racist. It's challenging. So one of the features a lot of people like in a bag is for it to be able to be both a, uh, a backpack because hands-free and we're walking through town, we're going through the metro, we're getting all the stuff that we need to do, backpack. And then briefcase where you can walk in just like, hello, I am a respectable, responsible, contributing member of society. Are you worried about me? You shouldn't be. Why? Look at my briefcase. Okay, sir, nothing to see here, move along. Now, here is a challenge, okay? People who need briefcase mode alongside backpack mode. You know who you are. You're wearing suits or you're wearing nice gear or you're going into meetings that you just kinda, you, backpack makes you feel like it's junior high again or you're walking through the quad in high school. So I know a lot of you are needing that kind of conversion to briefcase mode, though you really do love to be able to grab a backpack strap Clip it on real quick, and now we're hands-free. No longer briefcase mode. Now, I think this bag is suitable for suits, okay? I think it's suitable for suits. It does this by its sort of clean, clean line aesthetic, which really just comes from a simplicity, a kind of sophisticated simplicity. You have little, little details here in the visuals that make it seem like it's, it's not just a cheap, uh, I don't like the like you're like like it's not like the bag that you got like handed down from your older sibling and that you've just been using like that old like uh, East Pack backpack in your closet. It's cleaner lines. It feels nice. I think the the like the heft of this material, the like the way it falls, the way it bunches and and stands and collapses, all of that is is accomplished through dimension, materials chosen and then construction, where the seams are, where the zippers are, and stuff like that. Very elegant way of making it a fancy feeling kind of bag in my book. Now, this backpack briefcase conversion, I think is fairly elegant, right? You have these little metal clips down here, so these things fold up and go 
inside. Nice, there it goes. Then you have a series of loops on the bag that are made from the same material that the webbing is all made from, which is rayon, actually. It feels like an, like an organic cotton is what it feels like. I, I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm not right in seeing that this is rayon, but that's what it says on the site. So loops made out of that rayon, and then these G-hooks, which actually are really, really great. They don't have their logo on here, but I'm fairly certain these are custom hardware that Question designs themselves. Now they go into the loop, bada bing, and you're in there. I have never had an issue with the G-hook coming off on these G-hooks, making them up to date. My favorite G-hook I've seen on a bag. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say it. It's my favorite G-hook that I've ever found so far. Okay, so moving this handle thing from the top where I normally keep it to the side is not that much work. We're just, let's remove these handles first, just both of them. And then you can kind of like think about, look at this handle, okay? So it's leather on a strap with the G-hooks. And you kind of think about how you want it to look when you're looking at the bag. You might want the logo towards you. You might want the logo out. Guess what? You can do it, you can, Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. You can have it your way, motherfucker. And then you just apply these guys up here. Now I'm doing this in real time so you can get a sense of how much work it really takes to do. It's fairly easy to find the little tunnel to put that nose through. I suspect those of you who are going to be in briefcase mode a lot with this will leave the handles down here. Will that get in your way? No, there's one zipper here which gets you into the main capacity of the bag which I'll be showing you in detail shortly, but I don't think it's gonna be in your way very much. No more so than it is in your way up here. I do have to say, however, I have loved having these handles on the top of the bag. They're always there for me to grab. I can grab one or two. The bag comes up either way. I can button them together. I'm always buttoning them apart or unbuttoning them when I get into the bag. Uh, just a note to say, you will notice these handles on the top of the bag. You'll notice them, they're there. They've got a nice leather bit to them. I carry by this a lot. Okay, so backpack briefcase, I think conversion on this is fairly important because uh, it uh, opens up this bag as an opportunity for a lot of you people who are, you know, wearing shoulder pads in your blazers. Respect. Thanks for keeping it together. Thanks for finding your way to fight your way through that corporate maelstrom. Thanks for holding to your center as much as possible. And I sure hope a bag like this, some sort of daily item that you bring as a totem, as a reminder to yourself of the things you stand for in your life so that by help or by harp, I don't know, is that a saying? By help or by harp? <laughs> what the fuck? By help or by harp, you will hold your line and will not allow yourself to be taken under. By what? By the corporate maelstrom of mania that comes massively towards the men especially, but all the, also the women. Why is it just, I was just on an M thing there. Okay, but it also fits great dressed down. I can't, uh, I can't overstate this too, that like when I'm in my metro areas, like a downtown LA, DTLA, you're meeting with someone who's like of uh, an interest, like they got boots on, like they have boots and their pants are like perfectly like worn through and everybody and you're like, oh, who's this person? What are they doing? They look like a celebrity. I can't even tell. You would feel right at home in this bag. You will get compliments on this bag, not from everybody, but only from people who are paying attention to bags, which is kind of a cool thing. My friend Jay up in Canada, one of my closest friends ever who I trust and respect, and he's helped me a lot, giving me feedback on, the, on this fucking uh, channel and what I'm doing here. I gave him one of these, actually a larger version of this. So Question makes a larger version of this called the backpack, right? So it has more capacity than this. And he was giving me his feedback on using this. He uh, is a suit guy, he has to walk into meetings, so he has it in briefcase, mo briefcase mode often for that kind of thing. He's saying that the material is kind of war wearing through after he's, he's probably taken 5,000 travel miles on that thing. Starting to see little bits of wear, and this is one of the big issues on this bag, the questions that I have, is will this wear into a patina or just into decay? That is the big question. It's too early to tell on these materials. I, I haven't had a coated material like this uh, that I've used for a long time yet. But Jay also mentioned that whenever he uses it and has it out in airports and stuff like that, the only people who come up to him are people who are bag nerds. <laughs> I love that. He has like saddleback leather or the Waterfield Bolt and people, no matter what, will like look at those bags and go like, oh, 
what is that bag? That's so amazing. But he noticed a very stark difference in the people who notice this bag. He gets into different kinds of conversations with them and has find them, I think, pretty fun. Okay, but it works dressed down. That's really what I want you to know. It's like t-shirts and jeans. This thing is kind of just at home there. It might even, it, it churches up the outfit in that regard, which is what I like, because as a hippie, Someone who wants to like sleep in and someone wants to, you know, eat healthy and someone wants to just kind of look all natural in some ways because I just couldn't be bothered with like changing my appearance. For who? For some other person? But then I'm like, all right, put on the fucking button shirt because you don't want to look like a, such a slob. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of my life is being a slob on the inside and kind of relishing in it, you know? But then knowing the ways in which I can sort of church up the appearance so people don't think I'm homeless. Now, what do you say we kind of get into this thing? But I want to do it in the context of, of one of the big challenges with a daily carry bag like this, especially when you're locking in yourself into like a suit bag, because like when you're dressed up, you need this thing to work with whatever you're wearing. And you're probably not wearing the same thing every day because, and suit stuff's expensive, you know, you're getting your power suit on, you're getting, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I want to find you guys a bag that works for all your outfits and all your things. I want you to be satisfied with one for a while, right? So that we're buying less bull crap. We can put our money towards like, towards things that matter more in our life, like our retirement and our savings, like contributing to being a part of the solution for the people that are of lower income in our neighborhoods. Just donate money to a food bank, by the way. Don't do food drives. By the way, Adam Ruins Everything is a show that's now on Netflix. It's sort of, I think it might should be mandatory viewing. It, it got really good. But a part of that goal is having a bag that can work across multiple kinds of carry. You know, we call backpacks like this daily carry, but not all days require the same kind of carry. And one of the things I think is great about this bag is its design and how it has its internal pockets, how it sets up its capacity, where the organization is, et cetera. It's set up so that you can use it functionally across a lot of different modes of carry. Yes, did I just say that? Modes of carry. Let's get persnickety. Here's a question. How do you carry? Do you carry differently from someone that you know? Do you carry differently now than you used to? Do any of your bags facilitate both modes of carry? Because that's something that I see as a feature of a bag that can carry in multiple different kinds of ways, meaning it doesn't box you in. It works while you're carrying like a dongle Rodney, but as you maybe grow out of that or go further into that, it no longer works for you. I like the philosophy of a product that works sort of across a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different modes of carry. I call this utility. Right? Maybe there's a better word for it, but I think of it in terms of utility, how useful this particular product is across multiple modes of use, about multiple use cases or jobs to be done. What I'm specifically talking about here is the internal organization and the organization of the bag in general, because this is really where a bag gets to define itself in, for a lot of modern people. First of all, you've got a quick access pocket back here. Small, little, minimal, <laughs> yellow. Different. In here is where I put my like my in-ear Bluetooth headphones, my uh, my glasses case. I'll put a link to everything I'm mentioning uh, throughout the video in the description at YouTube with a time code. There's like a table of contents there. Now, a couple things. Number one, you see the color of this liner. We're gonna get into the liner. The liner's amazing. But that pocket is behind these straps here. You will notice that. Even the zipper is on the other side of that strap as I try to get at it. So you're constantly, when you're using this, kind of like or organizing yourself around the straps or orienting yourself around the straps, making a little less of a quick or a little bit less of an access, quick access pocket. While I'm back here, there's also a little panel right here, which is perfect for your, um, uh, your, uh, your straps your backpack straps, man. Then on the front of the bag, we actually have two internal pockets, one right behind here and one right behind here. This one is accessed with a zipper right on the other side of this panel. This one is accessed with a zipper right on the other side of this panel. So you actually access it through the side thing. 
And now I am in this internal organizer. What's important about it, there's no like pen or like other little organizing things inside of there. It's just a pouch up against the material. What's important about both of these pockets is that they keep stuff out of the main inner compartment, okay? They keep stuff out of here, up against into here, which I really like because this, as you can see here, turns into a bit of a stick and bindle, just a pouch, just a big mouth, a capacity to be filled, and whatever's in there is gonna go to the bottom. So those compartments are actually terrific at keeping your, um, your certain kinds of things uh, out of the main capacity. So that what's in the main capacity is visible and easier to get at because there's less things in there. And you are able to segment and put things in different places on the bag. So you'll know where, like I know exactly where my pen case is that has all my dongle Rodney bits in it, right? Watch the video on the Bellroy pencil case if you, if you haven't yet. And if you have 20 minutes to spare on a madman ranting about some pretty interesting features in a pretty like simple product by the looks of it. Again, we are talking about how this bag enables multiple modes of carry by not having so much organization that you have to have a spot for every dongle, okay? This is, to some of you, too simplistic of an organization. Some of you will want more compartments, more panels to zip open. I know that what I want is that thing and it's in this thing, first order access on the outside of the bag. Both of those are inside the main compartment here, right? So you'll open up or undo your buckle here and then zip open this guy and now you have access to that top pocket. So I'm just showing you what this bag would be like to use on a daily basis if you need to get into that pocket and say your handle's put together. You might have to undo it, you might leave it together, but you're also going to have to open up this inside and then grab that stuff, right? So some of you are like, no me gusta on the kind of simplicity or the kind of pocket inside of a pocket thing. But others of you are like, oh, let me get that sweet, sweet, sweet style on my body because I need a bag that won't look too out of place with my suit. And that also doesn't look super fancy and a lot of times fancy bags are just really shit to use. Now, after spending a lot of time with this bag, I wanna say that you are going to have an experience with some serious design chops, okay, skill. Skill. Now, when I say design chops, what I'm, what I'm getting at is is uh, is a way of making something that has a an overall uh, an overall identity. I think I literally think of creating like it's a it's a it's a thing. It has a life of in and of itself. Now, this is informed by Bucky Fuller's ideas about design. If you're a designer and you're not studying Bucky Fuller. Stop everything. Go learn about who Buckminster Fuller is. Go go throw as many of his words and concepts and ideas into your head as possible. He talks about design in three sort of ways. One of them is an underlying order that's built into the thing. It's like there's an underlying order. And another one is a wholeness that, uh, that speaks to a coherence in the thing, right? And then another thing is the sort of, the, the, the presence of a deliberate, intelligence in the thing. And it's that last one that I really like in good design and good products. It's a, that, that sense of a deliberate intelligence involved. And that's what you get with a, with a bag like this because everything's sort of thought through enough um, to be asking the question, what's essential? What do we really need? What are the number of pockets? What are the things we actually have to have? And then how do we make that experience as, as, as free of bullshit or of cheapness or of, uh, of unthoughtfulness as possible. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, how do we make it free of unconsciousness? So that when you're using it, you get the experience quite often that like, oh, 
That didn't have to be like that. I'm just glad it is. Like, let's look at some examples here. Like little things, little things, you get the visual delights on this bag. Little things like this leather tag sewn in right here. The simple embossing and, and silver stuff on it. But this is also useful as, you know, if you want to, as a pen stay, you can clip some pens in there. Also, the little logo uh, on the button here, little visual design elements like that. The There's also tactile elements that are, that are, profoundly useful. There's a loop here. This is a twist lock, okay? We'll talk about this sort of format for the bag here in a second. I know I've kind of like not talked about the elephant in the room yet, the fact that we have all of these zippers and we're getting in and out because that's the first thing I would think of learning about on this bag. But after using it for a while, I just want you to know it's not the most important thing about this bag. It's this coherence. It's this underlying sense of order. And it's this, uh, this experience of a deliberate intelligence that for me marks what it's like to be with a good product, a well-designed artifact, and this is one of those. But this, this twist lock right here actually has a nice little loop. It's built onto a loop so you can get your fingers right behind that when you're using it, making it just really easy to grab, push through, and do all the things you need. Now that is functional. It's like, a, okay, it's make, not only do I use this weird twist lock thing on the bag, but it's actually been thought through how I'm going to use that. Again, taking out the unconsciousness as much as possible. Because let me just tell you, folks, can I just talk for a second? <laughs> That's like my Bill Murray. What is going on? There's a lot of bags you can get that are just coming off of factory floors in China's with douchebags out here in the West just going like, you know what's hot right now is bags and I'm gonna make a bag. And they go to some place in China or they make some contact with someone on Alibaba and they just like don't, like without any design experience, without anything, they just start making a product. And the, the manufacturer on the other side is able to put together and design like all this amazing stuff, you know, but it's a, you know, it's a camel. You know what a camel is? It's a horse designed by committee, you know? There's not a sense of, of that deliberate intelligence in there. God, and that is just, that's an experience in the world. It, that's why I like good things. Good things make your life better. Good thing, what did I, what did I, was I saying? Like, I was thinking about this the other day, like well-designed things change your mind. Like they change your mind about things, but it's a job to like know what's well designed and what isn't and go find interesting things, novelty, but it's not just novelty, it's novelty with that intelligence. Sorry, I'm like rambling on this. I get it, I know I'm like rambling, but this bag is very fucking challenging for me because it seems to offer a lot up, but it's just such a simple, bag. It's hard to communicate to you what it's like to be in relationship with over a longer period of time. So the point I'm making is there's some design chops going on here. And you're going to see that in some of the visual stuff, like that little leather thing I showed you that was sewn in. What always speaks the most to me is, is when you, it's like when your eyes are closed and you're just touching the thing. This material is very interesting. As I mentioned earlier, I think my, my hope is that it breaks down towards patina. Do you know what patina is? Patina is that thing where you build like something on your house out of copper and over the years and the seasons and the whatever, the way that copper patina is because it's such a robust material, but it has an it, like a relationship with whatever environment it's in, right? Water, humidity, heat, all these things affect it. And you see the results of that effect on the copper itself. And it oftentimes looks like it's been lived in, it's it's alive. You know how a good wine matures over time? That's a kind of patina for your tongue. There's a lot of products out there that do not patina well over time. Why? Because they're made with shit. But what's interesting about this organic cotton canvas, we're going with a very sustainable uh, thing here, or trying, the, the goal is sustainability. The goal is sustainability for this company. Eco, resourcefulness, sustainable, renewal, this kind of stuff. And so this coating allows a, a, a material like that to have a kind of a of a like maybe it's nicer thing, right? Like like Eddie Murphy didn't come out in raw wearing an organic cotton canvas jumpsuit. It was shiny fucking leather, man. And I like that this isn't too shiny, by the way, visually. But again, I'm talking about the tactileness of this. You thought I lost my train of thought. The tactileness of this bag is sensational. The outside isn't my favorite part. 
It's just okay. I, I like this. This is like, what are you like? What are you gonna do? You can like wax canvas. You even kind of get sick of because you can get a little waxy on your fingers, and sometimes you don't like that. So you're back to just using the bag for what it is. But where I really experience the um, the tactile nature of this bag is the lining. The lining. This color, I think, is sensational. Their bags, the colorways that they have on their bags is are all very interesting, and that's what takes it up a level. But if you stopped at just the color and thought that's what would be the most important thing about it, you'd be wrong. It's what this is made, <clears throat> excuse me, what this is made out of. It's this organic cotton that it just feels really, it feels really, uh, I don't know, it just feels, it's the ultimate place of intersection of like quality and earthiness or like fancy or, or, or uh, indulgent, like rich, a rich sort of experience, but it's not uh, overwrought, over-designed, uh, uh, too indulgent. Again, we are getting fucking fussy about these bags. I know that a lot of you probably won't have the same experience. You're like, what a bunch of bullshit. As someone who just, just thinks about the design of products right now full time, this is, uh, this is such an elegant solution. Such a fucking brilliant, elegant solution. In fact, you know who also uses a similar material for this is Pact in their Pact Duffel, okay? There is a, uh, they, they, they use this same, it feels the same material as the lining and it feels like, uh, like it feels nicer than Louis Vuitton. Do you understand? Like it's like, oh, all those people spending so much money on designer bullshit right, are just buying indulgent materials. This, as a mode of design for 220 bucks, to get something that is designed like at the most ecologically resourceful sort of uh, resource responsible way. I know I'm just like ranting right now, aren't I? Can you just even take this at all? I apologize, but this is what this video is, I guess. I don't know. But to do the resources in a, in a responsible way, and it has the tactile human quality on the other side, the experience of it that you're like, oh fuck, this is good. By the way, one of the places you're really gonna love this is on the waffled texture here on the laptop pocket, all right? Not the most protective laptop pocket you've ever seen. Protective, I mean specifically from, from outside. There's not a false bottom on it. And when you're carrying the bag like this and you're going up a stair, you wanna be careful not to hit your precious MacBook Pro on that like, you know, uh, or, you know, <laughs> IBM ThinkPad. If you're wearing a suit, you might be wearing, you know, put an IBM ThinkPad in here. Not the most laptop protection, you should know that, but I have been carrying, I'm not, I don't care. Like, put it, put it in a stronger case if you want. Um, I've never had a problem with it, knock on wood. I know that it can happen. I know that by saying that, I'm welcoming that kind of thing into my life, but I'm not welcoming that. I do not welcome that, please stay away. But this waffled texture is terrific. You'll really like this. It's just, it's, it's, it's just playful. Now, my final point about this bag is for any of you who have had a really nice bag, like say like leather, like shiny leather, really shiny metal bits, you know, like a nice bag. It's like, oh, we're going to London. Like I have a nice, you know, daily carry bag for what, all of the things that I need. For any of you who've used a bag like that and found it to be wanting, <laughs> found the experience to be somewhat shitty because people who are designing fancy bags often are more interested in designing fancy looking bags than fancy performing bags, right? Because there's a whole artistry. There's a whole way of inquiry and con concern and compassion involved in making something that actually works well, making something that just looks good, that's, anybody could do that. <laughs> Not anybody, I know it's actually challenging. But have you ever met someone who looked really good, was very attractive, but didn't really have like a, a personality? That's what this isn't. I think it looks good and it has a personality. It doesn't feel like dressed up for life. It just feels like life that it happens to have a sense of personal style. <laughs> Like, of course I have, of course I put on my sport, sport coat, oh boy. What do you think, I just go out of the house in my pajamas? <laughs> so this bag was designed for multiple modes of carry, backpack and briefcase and tote kind of thing, all right? It's got lots of design details just visually and aesthetically from the outside, even though we're, we're really going with a simple look, but little design details like the logo here, logo here, flashy hardware, flashy hardware, G-hooks, little, little design accoutrement. 
accoutrement inside. And I mean, by the way, you can really get specific on this. This circle stitching, by the way, very unique. You won't find that anywhere. And it does have a little bit of a visual appeal when you're wearing it. And apparently it's a strong method for, you know, binding two pieces of fabric together. Now, as you've seen a few times on camera here, there are multiple ways into the bag. One of the things I really want to point out to you is that many of you will get used to using either the front zipper or the back zipper here, because you only really need one to get inside and get your stuff. I always go with the laptop uh, side back zipper so that I can get my laptop and I can get in everything I need. When I need to just get into the bag, I'll use one zipper. But what I found myself doing, this is somewhat inspired by the Nomadic Messenger video I did, which I'll put a link in the description below, is I found myself just kind of like opening this thing up like this and then just kind of having it present like this. It doesn't look that good, I have to admit, I do like, though I do like the color. Again, this is what I'm seeing over here, right? So I have it next to me right here, and then my laptop's right here, and I'm working away, and anything I need, like my uh, beef jerky that's in here, for example, or some nuts, or my keyboard and mouse, and nest stand, or roost, I'm sorry, roost stand for editing my videos after this, or my little smoke pouch, or my little pouch that I put my headphones in right now to throw those in, or my water bottle, which I'm testing, that has a UV light in the top of it. Okay, and then here you can see we've got a lot of capacity in this bag, 15 liters. Now, what I'm really talking about is the opening and getting into it. This is like splayed out. This is just like a flower blossomed for us. And watch, by the way, how easy it is to put things back in. It's just a big sack, folks. Just a big old sack. And so what you'll find is you're, you're, ma you're carrying what the pouches are that you're carrying in there. Bagworks.co slash pouches. Bagworks.co slash pouches for all your pouches needs. The bummer of this mode, of course, is that uh, you've got to close it all up, including this little, this little twist lock, which in my experience, if you're focused on it, it happens very easily. But if you're just like trying to have a conversation or record a video while you're doing it, sometimes it can feel a little bit like, all right, gotta get my finger behind there and then I twist it. But surprisingly easy and one of those pieces that's, that's gonna like outlive you. Like this will last longer than you will. There's maybe some chances that this whole bag lasts longer than you will which is my fucking swear to God, I hope that for this. What I want is like, have you ever met someone who has like a really, really old Fjall Raven backpack? You know, like just the old toady thing. And it's like there was their grandpa's or their, their dad's when they were traveling around and they just happened to go to that part of the world and like everybody like goes by that store and got that bag and it's still, it's still like, it still works. God, I hope this is that. I really hope this is that. And again, the outlying question or the, the outstanding question there is just about how does this break in over time? If you've got like links that you can share of how your coated cotton canvas thing like this has broken in over time, please share it in the comments below because that would be very interesting for us. You know, Alfred North Whitehead said, seek simplicity, but distrust it. Seek simplicity, but distrust it. I think this is very good advice because if you've ever gotten something that was too simple, uh, you might find yourself going, I want another zipper somewhere. Like I want another place to put my things. Too simple is definitely too simple. It exists. The whole question in design, question? <laughs> the whole question in design is, what is the level or the caliber or the quality of simplicity that we're actually looking for in our lives that will not just solve our needs, but maybe a lot of our fellow man and woman's needs, right? Because if we can make a product that does a great job, utilitarian-wise, like it's useful for many modes of carry, but ultimately its simplicity is its aesthetic, right? Well, then there might be a chance that this thing stays in business is, is a product for for like more than a generation. As a product designer, or really as just a product designer fanboy, uh, this is the, th these are the kinds of questions that we, we fantasize about, we think about. We think about designing something that's gonna solve a problem for a very, very, very long time. And I think this day pack from Question is an awesome example of a product like that. I think you should check it out if you're business folk or if you need something like this. You've seen the bag now. You've seen all that it does, basically. 
I know it's a different review for me than normally. I just couldn't get my head around this thing. It's challenging, it feels important, but it's also, it's just a bag, you know? So hopefully this wasn't too much pontification, let's be honest. How is a video for me not gonna have too much pontification? So listen, if you need business bags, you need a bag for work, you need a bag for your commute, you need a bag that gets you to where you're going in a way that when you arrive there, your boss doesn't fire you. Well, I've got you covered. I've got a page on my website that has all my favorite business bags. Bags for work, bags for commute, bags for not looking like a, you know, a total doofus, um, or at least, you know, <laughs> covering up the best we can. So check out the link in the description at this time code for more business bags, because I know some of you need some help on that. Also, while you're there, subscribe on the email list, because we do bag giveaways, and we're gonna be doing another one as soon as we cross 100,000 followers here on the channel, which I think is gonna happen. <laughs> like, we just keep, it just keeps going. Maybe we'll have to do one at 75. I don't know. How do we grow? How do we do it? Let's keep going. I wanna be done with thinking about growing. I just wanna be done with thinking about it and I just wanna go, here's a bunch of free shit. And you know where I do that? Is on the email list there. So please sign up, cause you'll get free shit, maybe. And as always, I hope your life is just fucking being your life right now. I don't know how it's going for you. I don't know. I know for some of you, it's going really fucking bad, man. It's really hard. You're stuck in your head. You're in that skull size kingdom that David Foster Wallace talked about and it's isolating, and it's lonely, and you're watching videos of a fucking crazy person on the web. Talk about backpacks. And I know for others of you, it's going pretty good. You're like, dude, I'm starting to get things going. We're starting to get some traction here. No matter where you are, know that there you are. <laughs> Here you are, right now, it's happening. You're literally watching this video if you're listening to my voice. It's you doing your life and you're creating it all. You're doing a really fucking good job. Don't let anybody else tell you differently. If there's something you don't like in your life, you are putting it there in a major way, in a major way. I won't go all the way to say that you're creating the fucking tsunami that happens somewhere. I won't go all the way to say that like, you know, dude, I don't know. I don't have the fucking answers about this shit, but I'll tell you what, when you step into agency in your life, when you step into, I'm making decisions and I don't have control over everything, but I have control over what I have control over. That is what they call, <laughs> I guess, I don't know, maybe just enlightenment itself, if not just a, a step on the path. It's agency. And what you'll find in there is that your actions affect you and they affect everybody else you've ever loved, known, and cared about. And then you start taking seriously your actions and start thinking seriously about your intentions and what you want in life. This is a video about a bag. This is how I'm closing it out. Because life is fucking precious, man. Life is precious. And any of you have experienced serious deep loss and grief, you know what I'm talking about. It's like a song that blows through your spirit and you just can't unhear it. Hear it in spirit rhyme. It's fun to have things like this in our life, good things. And if you do that, you gotta not have too much good things because that's called indulgence or greed, right? And it's kind of the thing, it's the thing a baby does. It's a thing a, a very chubby baby does, right? Is it just wants. That's fine, no bad. So much of growing up is about learning how to, you know, control your desires. But if you have too much stuff in your life, you're gonna feel a different kind of pain. It's a numbness, all right? You wanna watch out for that. That's why the minimalization of your life, the focusification of your intentions and of your things towards your intentions, right? Which means culling off, removing the things that are unessential anymore. So it'll change your whole fucking gig, man. And you don't need anybody to tell you how to do it, right? I mean, you kind of do. Go watch Marie Kondo's show on Netflix. Go follow Matt Devel Develia. I'll put a link to him in the description below. He helped make that minimalist movie and he's got a great YouTube channel. Check it out. For any of you still watching, I, I appreciate you out there. Not all the videos are, you know, have a, a real specific story. This one gets into so much of the shit that I, that I just care so much about, but I'm still such a novice in. Like I can see the underlying principles and sacred geometry of the concepts here, but at the same time, I'm still fairly like priesthood about it, kind of precious and self-absorbed, you know what I mean? So thanks for bearing with me as we get through this, but I do really hope that some of you who are watching this are finding a bag that you can use in your daily life. Like that this one in particular, or maybe some of the others on the business bags page, you can just be done with the bag question because you have something in your life that does add things to it. It adds a kind of goodness to it. It's nice to have a thing you interact with 
that has this, what did Bucky Fuller call it again? It was this deliberate intelligence. Oh, wow. God damn. R.I.P. Bucky Fuller. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bagworks.co JaceReeves.net Those are the websites. I guess those are the websites. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Let's go check out what he's up to or something like that. Yeah, it looks nice.